Look at this. They're all over the place. They were teeny last time. Now they're they're, they're huge. Full blown but, but caterpillars. There's, but there is none above. None above. It didn't quite work like I expected, but it has been working. Have you ever been engaged in a in a war or a social problem, in which you get your desired outcome, but it didn't actually matter that you did anything. The problem is way better this year than it was last year. But I don't think it's because of, of this. I think it's just some natural force. We're gonna do a little tour of the insidiousness of these creatures. These are eaten by mostly the winter moth caterpillars. It's, it's on you, it's gonna eat you. Just walking around, you'll get them all over you. They get in the house. Last time I suggested that maybe get rid of a few trees, and man, people are offended by that. John's gonna hate your suggestion, because did you notice that he has wrapped this little tiny tree? <laughs> Whoa, <that's laughs> tree. Last year, this tree was completely defoliated. It actually has not defoliated significantly since I sprayed it with the BT and wrapped it. But these trees are very easy to treat because it's so low to the ground, you can easily get all the leaves. The oak trees, no way you're doing that. What do you think has been the most effective of your actions? Is it the wrapping or is it the spray? The wrapping was supposed to, they were supposed to crawl up into it and die, right? Because they couldn't get out. They're actually not doing that. They are not going onto the wrapping and not passing the sticky barrier, which is fine too. However, there's still a significant number up in the trees themselves that are just crawling between branches and they'll never leave the branches in their lifetime. You had a lot of concern last time that the moisture that built up underneath the wrappings was yeah. gonna be part so of the tree. Yeah, so let's go take a look at that. We have uh, an oak tree, it's about maybe uh, 50 years old. And this has got some severe damage. It has nothing to do with the winter moss, but pull map the wrapping a little bit. Ooh, ooh. Oh my. Yeah, pill bugs. And this is caused by the wrapping? Yes. This tree in particular is affected because the bark is very de is dead. I got sticky crap all over my arm. <laughs> yes, you did. Oh, I can yeah. see it right there because it's on this leaf by accident because I was kind of <laughs> I was kind of lazy when applying it. The wrapping has to come off probably within the next two weeks. Even those maple leaves right there, you can just see how eaten through they are. This is definitely a big improvement. Did you wrap any more after that? No. How do you know what height to wrap it? Because I'm doing it in the spring, it doesn't really matter so much. They'll crawl up to where the wrapping is. If you do it in the fall to try to prevent them from laying the eggs that become the things in the spring, as low to the ground as possible so that they won't crawl up, they'll lay all the eggs below that point. You really only need enough area to spread to your, your goop Around. You can use petroleum jelly. Uh, petroleum jelly will work just as well. Anything that's not going to wash off with the rain. The thing about petroleum jelly is it's just about as expensive as the stuff I used. It's not as durable as, as putting this stuff. Petroleum jelly can, in the sunlight, actually melt and run down the tree. You really don't want too much of that. Oh, I got more? And a little on the shirt. I normally keep the porches kind of clean. I have not cleaned this one for about a week in order to show you some of the secondary damage. What they'll actually do is chew off pieces of leaves. You get a lot of leaf fall from partially eaten leaves that of course are now dead. So it's defoliating not just from them eating it, but also from them cutting pieces of the leaves off and they fall to the ground. And they have no impact on the bamboo? None. Yeah, what is it about the bamboo that makes the bamboo safe from this tyranny? They just, they just don't seem to like it. The bamboo was actually hit really hard this year, so there's not many leaves on it anyway. We had a very bad frost this past year, and that actually did major damage to the bamboo. But is it rude for me to suggest that you're kind of panda-like? You could maybe snack on some of these and kind of help you cut down the- You can actually eat these, but only when they're a couple inches above the ground. Is this an invasive species? This is not yes. a New England- this is invasive. But you're, you're tolerating this species, but the winter you're playing favorites. So you make an interesting point, you know. The bamboo is beautiful and lovely and does not eat the oak trees. Peaceful invasive species are okay with you. Yes, or ones I can easily control. Like for this bamboo, all I have to do is just kick it down when it grows up. My father planted it maybe about 12, 15 years ago. There's a massive grove of bamboo. I was gonna say, there's a view of a field of yeah, bamboo. Yeah, a field of bamboo. It's out of control <laughs> completely. There is actually one more serious annoyance about these winter moths. It's the sound. If, you just, if we just sit and listen for a moment. Is that what those little drops are? Yes, that's them pooping. But I don't expect the listeners at home to be able to hear it, and I want them to. Your problem is the noise pollution? Yes. Or the actual physical pollution no, well, of moth poop everywhere? The, the moth poop everywhere is actually a serious problem. I've got some in my hair right now. A piece just fell right on my head. And, and look, you can't do anything about it, Nina. You're gonna have moth poop in your hair. You already do. The fact that you, you can just be sitting there and you can hear it, and there's nothing you could do about it. Yeah. This pisses me off. Do you start to picture in your head full grown men in the trees taking dumps? I don't. Now I do. Thanks. <laughs> that's, that's just wonderful. We have, you know, great equipment here at Red Cow Entertainment. I'm going to bring out a serious piece of equipment to record the winter moth poops. All these little black dots is actually ah. the poop. At least when we shoot box mac, we don't have like mac fall from the sky on us. <laughs> this microphone. Yep. It's a Royer SF24. It's got a windscreen on it because this is a very sensitive, this is a ribbon stereo microphone. It's about $4,200 $4, for this Whoa, microphone. Whoa, when did you buy this? 
last year. Normally, this microphone is used to record orchestras, sometimes single-handedly. I'll just put one microphone up above, a Grammy winning, gr Grammy, is it Grammy or Granny? Grammy. Grammy winning. You think it's a, the Grannies? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> you can actually put a clip, I'll send you a link to a recording of some great classical music done solely with this microphone. Wow. With a piece of equipment like that, what are we gonna use it today for? We're gonna reuse it to record moth poop. I've got a, uh, a nice little handy H6 recorder. I love this recorder. And I've got a pair of Bose noise canceling earphones. You know how we talked about how camera demos tend to be of like nature and, and kids running around or parks or whatever? Yeah. Where are we gonna swing things so that microphones are tested by how well they can record bug poop? I don't know. I, actually, there's only a couple videos of this microphone on YouTube. So if you put this in the tag, you might actually get people who come just to see how well this microphone can record Excellent. Uh, poop. Most of the sound when you hear moth poops uh, is up in the trees. It's hitting the leaves, not so much hitting the ground. That hollow sound of, it, right. of it hitting something with no resistance. We're going to move this out here into kind of the middle of the stage. Like it sounds like very light rain, if I did not know any better. Yeah. FYI, John's dad is in the garden right now and we've been doing crap like this for way too many years for him to wonder why we're doing this. Let's have quiet for a moment. I'm gonna see if I can hear the moth poops through the headphones. Oh yes. And now for Nina? We could have this in a museum, right? <laughs> this could be like at the Museum of Natural Science, you would have like, listen to moth poops, put on the headphones. Yeah. You have to press the button for the moth poops just because it's interactive. It's an interactive experience. <laughs> it's kind of creepy. It's majestic. I wonder what's gonna happen when you do unwrap all the trees. I think they'll be mostly okay. I think that one was mostly suffering damage because it's, it's got that dead bark in that area. And then they'll kind of all just go away for a while till the fall when suddenly on one November day, you'll get a burst of moths. We live by the water, Nina and I, and we get uh, mayflies, fish flies. Yeah. And fish bugs, mayflies. Whatever. You wake up one morning and they're everywhere. Well, we've since learned, now that we've done it for a few years, that if you keep all your lights off at night, you're okay. Yeah. But if you trick. forget a light, your whole side of your house See, is See, you have to have completely different strategies for your insect infestations than I have to have for mine. I definitely just got poop in my hair. I'm sorry, Nana. It wasn't you, you didn't poop in my hair. Thank goodness. Because I was thinking about it. <laughs> An insidious pest. Insidious. is NET, the National Educational Television Network.